Beautiful. Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome podcast. Uh, I think today we're going to discuss a little bit of the roots of us. <laughs> the roots yeah, of us. and where we want to take it. I mean, we're about to start we're, we're, 2021. So yeah. let's explain. Hopefully the world will what not the... end by <laughs> December 12th. Hopefully the guy that wrote right. the Mayan calendar wasn't dyslexic. Exactly. <laughs> let's hope Let's hope that's the case. And I will, by the time you see the podcast, if you hear this podcast, that means we're still alive. We're still good. So it's all good. That means we're planning for 2021. Yeah. So first and foremost, one wheel pint is now in my possession. I have the best wife ever. I came back from a long coaches week and she got it for me as an as a Christmas present. Aww. But I saw the box and I was like, I need to open it. And she goes, wait till Christmas Day. And no. I was like, no. no, no. Like that defeats <laughs> that, the whole thing. Yeah, that, that's that not going to gonna happen. So yeah. I got to open it and I got to write it. So that was fun. Um, Did you come on it? Yeah, it was, it's awesome. I'm sketched out by the cops a little bit. But man, I'm telling you like, the calves, my hamstrings, like everything. Everything worked. Yeah, it just was, from having to stabilize. Yeah, it, yeah. and it's it, I, it's almost like a Disney December because you can kind of float on it. So even not though you're not doing a do lot it, of movement. But yes, right. You have yeah, to be good enough. Be, yeah, no, it won't be Disney. Like, You'll be beyond the questions. We're going to get yeah. Julian to try it after the podcast and you guys yeah, will see. Yeah. It's, 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 it has simple stuff so you can get so right So if off. I don't make it to 2021, you know what happens. <laughs> yeah, always exactly. the fault. If you guys know anybody that has any cool tips on it, Head on over, comment down Any below. free product to well, the pint one wheel, we'll take it. Future future motors. Can we talk about this for a second? Yes. Look, we have a social media following. We yes. are getting known in the world. Correct. I think if I deserve one thing, it's a Lululemon sponsorship. That would be epic. Lululemon, guys. Make it Lululemon. happen. Lululemon, come on. Like every hashtag, single time, just tag Lululemon. Yeah, exactly. Like hashtag Julian needs Lululemon or some shit like that. But and I literally changed my sweatpants because we're wearing the same sweatpants. So I put Lululemon, jeans on. Exactly. But I will say my boxers are Lululemon. My t-shirts Lululemon. Yeah, exactly. 90% of our stuff is Lululemon. Like so hashtag sponsored by Lululemon. I know they don't sponsor people. That's the entire point. We I should be, be the first though. to be sponsored. But I think that we could teach all of their ambassadors. We could do the retreat. We could run a retreat for I all totally the Lululemon agree. ambassadors and teach them a whole lot. Just get us FYI. some Lululemon stuff yeah. is all I'm saying. So let's go 2021 first. So where is, Wait, I think we, that's the biggest question that I feel we get at every seminar, every coaches week, every time we talk to people are like, where is StrongFit going? Right. So, well, to explain where we're going, I need to explain where we were about yeah. two years ago. We got to a point where StrongFit was getting pretty big. Lots of people on the mentoring program. Uh, you know, money is flowing. We're doing seminars left and right, uh, which, I mean, we're still doing five years later, yep. even with COVID, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and we saw a need for structure. Yeah. Uh, so the content was always there, but the structure wasn't. And so we had advices on that because there was a need for it. There's no question. But this is an argument that I've seen in the business world. And I do believe... The world is changing in an aspect. I'm going to explain. Um, everybody tell you that you have to build a brand. Yeah. Not the people in it. It's not yeah. Steve Jobs. It's Apple. Even right. though once Steve, uh, Steve Jobs left, Apple is not what it used to be. It's not the same. Right. I'm sorry, but the kinks, all the shit, like, I'm not buying a new iPhone. Right. Like, I'm not buying something else. But at the same time, like, it's just, you know what I mean? Like, anyway. It's not the same. It's not the same. The technocrats took over, and now I'm sure they're milking the shit out of all of that, but then now you start to feel used. They're starting to lose as much of an asshole as he was. But I feel the human side of it, the attraction, the, the, right. the hipsterish of it, I, yeah. I feel it's, it's, honestly, I feel it's gone. Anyway, so we faced a little bit the same questions where everybody is telling us to do, to make it a business. Yeah. Which, don't get me wrong, from a structural perspective, is necessary. Yeah. We definitely need that. But there was that push toward almost on the branding aspect of pushing strong fit as the name and not Richard and Julian. And at the time, I disagreed, if yeah. you remember, but not being good at business and everything, I was like, look, you can't disagree on something you don't know. Yeah. That's just being stubborn. Yeah. Which is one of my many <laughs> well. qualities. Um, <laughs> it's one of my many qualities. Um, and so I was like, all right, so let's see what you guys are saying. It's actually a conversation I had with CJ from Invectus who dissociated his name from the Invectus brand and right. all that conversation. And we are two years later, and I think I was right. Yeah. I think Strong Fit is not Strong Fit the brand. I don't think people give a shit about Strong Fit the brand. I think people care about you and they care about me and they want to follow what we do and then they want to see how we do it, why we do it. 
I think it's the human element that we bring that interests people and it has nothing to do with the brand strong fit. I don't think people give a shit. Mm -hmm. I thought that two years ago and two years later now that we are better at business, I think I'm right. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think on the business side, I'm definitely not good. I'm way too soft yeah, for same the here. business side. Same here. Um, I'm and I've gotten screwed over many times because of that. And they yells at me every time. I'm like, yeah. but the person just wanted the assessment. So yeah, I exactly. first I did yeah. the assessment. This and then she's so like, nice. but did you charge him? Well, he's going to pay me later. Of course, you never get paid and you yeah. never hear from the guy and then you get screwed. And Daya has to chase them. That's why she's pay- <laughs> And then she gets yeah, mad. Exactly. Um, so I think that in that aspect, the business is needed. Yeah. We need people that can that we trust that can be in the back end running things. Exactly. So that I don't need to stress about the contracts, the payment plans, the, any of that. And we can focus on what content is yeah. really needed, which is the content, the evolution, the disruption of the fitness industry, the so on. So or relationship. Yeah. That this is how strong fit started. That's yeah. what I want to get into today because I, I think uh, in the last uh, two years we had a lot of there's a new generation coming yeah. into strong fit. We can see that. We see that at seminars. We see that on a lot of stuff. Right. And I think a lot of them, they hear me because of the podcast and the crazy shit, but they don't know you. Yeah. And they don't know about us, our right. relationship, how the whole stuff started and all that stuff. Yeah. And this is where I want to bring strong fit back to. I don't want... Stru- so the structure of the business was extremely necessary and thank God for there. Yeah. Because without Absolutely. her, oh Jesus Christ. We'd be screwed. Like, uh, I don't think they'd be a strong fit without Daya right now. We'd probably be owing taxes and shit like yeah, that. We'd be, running, right. we'd be running somewhere. Oh, we would not, never get <laughs> paid, one or the other. You know I mean, uh, so, but what we needed was a structure, not a branding exercise. Right. And that's where the conflict has been in the last two years is that it's like, yes, bring us the structure of a business. Right. But not that weird. This is what a business should look like. Yeah. This is where I've disagreed from day one. And then, like, you know, every time I'm like, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. But now that, and by the way, so we had, for people who know, we have someone helping us on the business side, mentoring yeah. us. And we did a branding exercise for the last two months or whatever. Yeah. And at first, I felt I had to take a shower every time. Because <laughs> he was talking about <laughs> us in terms, I was like, who the fuck cares? But I do see the purpose and There's definitely value in it. Exactly. Yeah. I, now I see the value. And one of the values is it forced me to look at strong fit. And But what is strong fit? Right. Truly, that's a conversation I had with Janina, with Deya. And then there was very insight. Women are very insightful on that kind of stuff. And for example, Deya said the most fun part of strong fit is our relationship. Because we've been basically cruising for five years, yeah. always in flow, always the stuff. But people don't know any of it because at some point, we try to bring people into the core and that has never worked because they don't understand that flow. No. Like it's all good. Like we're just trying to change the world, man. Yeah. Like that's how it started. <laughs> and like, it's not, it's not about getting paid. It's not none of this shit. It's yeah. right. just doing good for mankind, man. And yeah. so there was a, a flow that I feel we lost a little bit. Like I'm looking at, I mean, I'm looking at our Instagram because now because of the branding, I'm like, all right, let's take let's a clear look, look at what's going on. as the message people are getting from us. And all I see on our Instagram is selling. Right. Yeah. Like it's absurd. And I'm like, but where am I? Where are you? Where is all that stuff? Everything, and so yeah. now we're bringing Alex, who's behind the camera right now. Say hi, Alex. Hello. Um, and he understands. Alex, how long, how long have you been following us for? I did the first seminar in 2016. Yeah, he was oh, the Jesus first, Christ. first seminar. Yeah, there. he was there in the first seminar in Utrecht. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In 2016. Oh, wait. so you were from the Webcast podcast. So you're like OG, strong OG. fit. OG, <laughs> strong fit. Before there was a strong fit probably yeah. back then. Um, so Alex is OG. So he understands what we talked about. So he's going to be in charge of the social media. And we're talking about making the social media back about why and how we do things. Yeah. How you train, how I train, uh, the relationship, all that stuff. Like I... I feel like I understand why businesses do it like this because it's a lot simpler right. to have a template and to have that blend stuff because it's quantity over quality. Well, it's like when you look at music now where it all sounds the same because well, they know the rap. timing, the exactly. this, the this, right. the this, or and movies. they know itself, yeah. And then they know exactly the type, right. like all the Marvel movies all the look Marvels, the same. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and, then, and then, oh, we have to put a woman inside. It's like that cookie cutter recipe now yeah. for everything. It's fast food. 
Right. And that's a lot of the fitness. And so they put you there because you can maximize money. Right. I get it. That's not what I want at all. Right. Well, it's, it's not what we do. <laughs> it's not what we do at all. And on top of it, I do believe the world has changed. I think oh. social media five years ago, would. You know, they started pushing that, but I think it's so oversaturated toward that. It's so towards it's selling crazy. that I think everybody's going to pull away from that stuff. Yeah. So me, I don't want to do this anymore. So right. like we're going to, on the structure thing, I told Daya yesterday, it's like we have to have ratio. It's 80% us, 10% yeah. strong fit, 10% selling. Right. Because yeah. like, we do have to announce the seminar. Right. We do have to announce when we have yeah. templates before, coming up. I, I, I mean, people that have been following us before, it was yeah. just, when it was just you, me, and Dea traveling around, it was like, hey, we're going to do a seminar here. And I wouldn't post. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. I'm yes. horrible at posting. I think you're horrible at posting. Really? <laughs> so we have Alex who's going to help us all. post. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but we... Like, no, we do need that. There's, yeah, there's no so question. that's needed. But it, but it, I remember we used to like not post. It was like, shit, it's in 10 days. Okay, we should start posting. Yeah, But we still got 30 people at the seminar, so yeah. it still worked. And so, you know, I think it's... But that, it worked. Yeah, that revolution, that, that aspect that now we have the ability to have the content that's going to be posted, I think it's, it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. I'm super excited. E exactly. Me, I'm just happy to be back, the two of us, honestly. Yeah. Like... So, okay, exp let's explain. People, again, I, I, and I think a problem is people have seen me from the podcast yeah. and all the stuff, but they, the new generation doesn't know who you are. Right. And they don't know that it's a two-headed snake. Like, yeah. it's not strong fit. I'm there. I do the, all the theory, uh, crazy shit, and Richard is my main coach. I mean, you are, but it's, it's far more than this. So I yeah. want to, because you were instrumental, like, there is no strong fit without you. And I think yeah. people need to know that. Like, it's not, you're just not my assistant. You are, but it goes so much deeper like, than this now. Yeah, I think uh, it started with my my rock climbing accident, which that's a whole... We'll I do a podcast issues, on that, yeah. so people... Um, yeah. But I think I, I gave... I sent Alex my pictures of my arm yesterday, so I'll send him the video of the screws getting taken uh, out. So he like sends that to me every year. That would be a, And every year, I'm like, real. dude, stop yeah. sending them to me. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, then getting into more more in depth into CrossFit, wanting to be a coach and help people and change lives and I was going through all of that, and of course, I wanted to become an athlete. And so that's really where I, I had this epiphany moment where I was like, all athletes have coaches. I need a coach. And I reached out to a bunch of coaches at the time that were big in the CrossFit world, and it was just cookie cutter programming. And I was like, my programming's harder than that. Like, I, yeah. don't, I don't see the point, I don't see the benefit in it. Yeah. Um, and I found you, I think I was looking up strongman stuff because I, I, I've always liked doing strongman stuff. Um, and you had the Viking press. Yep. And so I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I, I saw you were kind of coaching Val Volvoroy. Um, I, I always say I fuck up. Volvoroy. Yeah. Volvoroy. Uh, Vol 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 there we go. B-R. Yeah. Um, and I, I, so I was like, oh, well, this dude seems kind of interesting. And I saw you doing the, the Viking press, and I haven't seen anybody do that. So I was like, I did it. I think I put a little bit more weight than you. I did it. I sent it to you. I was like, hey, is this how you're supposed to do it? It's Knowing easy to once you know the way to bit. Anyway. I've done that to lots of people. Yes. And then I just get blocked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't block me, though. Yeah. Uh, um, and so we started having a conversation. Um, and, you know, I, I would say this is like one of the good things from my business partner. He's like, hey, if, if being an athlete is what you want to pursue, let's get you the coach. Uh, and so we started talking. We talked at the CrossFit Games. And then I think it was that September I went for the first session, um, so drove from San Clemente to Torrance, so it's like 90 minute drive with traffic yeah. or oh, so. Without traffic, <laughs> yeah. with traffic it might be a bit more, yeah. Um, went to go see you the first time and it was it was just a cool, it was a intimidating because I've been my own coach and I did yeah. all my own recovery, so that's after five surgeries and yep. everything, so it was, it was a bit intimidating going like, oh shit, someone's gonna actually judge me of what I'm doing and I don't like to suck at things. Um, and so we had that conversation. I was upstairs rolling and mashing and trying to get myself ready. And you were just talking to me about what I wanted to do, why I wanted to do it, uh, kind of where I wanted to go, if I'd had any injuries. Of course Which, not. And you said, not at all. I said, I'm fine. I have shoulder pain. Like, that's, yeah, that's, that's all. Yeah. That's, that's what I need help Three with. Three sessions in, I'm like, <laughs> you have kind of a big scar on your forearm. What's that about? He was like, yeah. Right. So I had a <laughs> small accident and then we'll do an entire podcast on the small accident because then we'll put the, yeah. the x-rays because you have to see what he meant by a small accident. 
Yeah. So we had the conversation. We did, you know, at that time, there was no torque. There was no internal rotation, yeah. external rotation. By the way, that conversation was 45 minutes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Because yeah, he we was were like, sitting there talking. What do you want exactly? Don't give me the bullshit cookie cutter answer. Yeah. What do you want? And it was it was super interesting. Like the things I remember the most, because I remember saying, "This is a, well, this is what I really want to do and how I want to do it." And you're like, "You're really strong." And I was like, "Yeah, but you know, CrossFit's the thing, dude. Like it's yeah. growing." Yeah. Um, and then I remember like, okay, well, if CrossFit is what you want to do, uh, you are your own true judge. And so what's your 5K time? That, and I knew, I feel like you started, I, I like, for me, it's like, that's a fuck you moment. <laughs> but it's like, what's your 5K time? How many strict pull-ups? What's your press, your push yeah. press, your well, handstand my, well, Yeah. So what's you, your hell in time? Yeah, and so yeah. You, you asked me, like, all these things to get the numbers on. Um, and I was like, cool, I'll, I'll, get, I'll start working on those numbers. And then we went downstairs. We did uh, YWTL at the time. We did the sh- we didn't do the shoulder opener. That came three months later. Yeah. We did the YWTLs. You had me do C press, and then we did rope pulls and overhead yoke carries, and that yeah. was spent. Yeah. And then you said, "Well, we still have to go." I-, I remember like on the rope pulls, like there's very critical moments in in that in that session. I remember, and we're in the rope pull, and I'm pulling. And I swear I was pulling as fast as I could. And he goes, "I said to pull fast." And in my head, I was like, you motherfucker, I'm going to show you how fast I can fucking pull this thing. I started just yanking the shit out of the rope. And I finished. And I just stood up. My whole face went white. And it was just like tunnel vision. I was like, oh, I fuck. this is the moment I knew I fucked up. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is going to hurt. And you were like, two minutes and we go again. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And I was like, this is a testing thing. I've seen yes. this in kung fu movies. I was like, fuck, how do I recover from this? What do I do? I was like, you just have to fucking do it. And when we used to do the rope pulls, you always had to do the drags. Yeah, you drag and, first and then you you pull the rope. And luckily, that's my for legs, lazy yeah. people. And like I remember, luckily my legs were so strong that as I was dragging, it was a neutral grip. Like I literally just hooked my hands in and I just interlocked my fingers so my grip could rest. Right, your grip got <laughs> murdered. That's and first I'm just set, yeah. going and I just my mid back did the entire drag on the second set and then I was done. And then we started to do the overhead yoke carries, and I think at like 110 kilos, like I was yeah. shaking. But yeah, back then you couldn't stabilize for shit. And so, there was a yeah. lot more shit talking, and you were pointing at my traps and laughing at me. Um, Might have then, happened. Yeah. And then I died, and then you had me do the sled drag, uh, the harness, and then I was oh. on the ground for like 15 minutes, and then you said, grab the sandbag and go walk with it. And there was no grip, there was no hips, there was just nothing. And I was like, if I don't do this, he's not going to want me back. And I remember because you said, well, we'll do a few sessions and I'll decide if I'll take you on as a client. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, but okay, fuck. so I explained. At the time, <laughs> you went to a CrossFit powerlifting competition. And I even wrote that, I think, on the comment yeah. or whatever, saying, how dare you? You have no business doing this competition. Fuck. Go where the strong people are because you're fucking strong. Yes, but also at that time, like this was back in 2013, 14, like... Like powerlifting communities are ex- were extremely difficult to get into, uh, especially for CrossFitters. Yeah, and there was no rules anywhere. It was really hard to find anything about it, and so I had no. no and you're coming clue. back from your accident. If you had mentioned it, it would have been a lot easier for me to know. You know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but no, no. So I, I was, understand totally. It was, but for uh, me, there was like I need to know if he's a. I'm gonna whoop everybody in CrossFit competition, but never step up. Right. So that was me. I was like, oh, well, let's see what he's made of. And yeah. I had my answer because I know you were dying. Yeah. It was, but you still finished. It was fun. That it was, fun. yeah, but that, I that had my annoying. answer. I was, was like, oh, I like him. <laughs> no, no, after that first session, I was like, all right, you win. Yeah. So I started carrying the sandbag and that was, I dropped it a few times and I just got back and I just remember laying on the sandbags for like 10 minutes and you just kind of like were on the phone and you just walked by, you're like, you need more left lat and just walked away. <laughs> and I was like, am I done? And I, I, from me doing my own coaching where you never ask, are you done? Yeah. I was like, don't fucking ask if you're done. Just fucking lay here yeah. for another five minutes. Try not to puke. Yeah, exactly. And then I'll be don't, on my don't way. Don't say anything. And I was like, I'll see you next week. And you're like, yeah. And I was like, bye. <laughs> and I sat in the car for 10 minutes. I'm like, I can't drive. And I was like, motherfucker, did he say I have no left lat? <laughs> yeah, that's what probably what. <laughs> wait, wait, what, what? I was like, that's some sort of bullshit. And then I was like, You've got to be kidding me. Because then I started looking at the session and I'm like, and like my whole head started to spin going like, I could do this at home. Like, do I really need him? Like, I need a coach, but 
I need a left lat. I have fucking lats. Like I have fucking like I have fucking look at lats. me. They work <laughs> like I do pictures like backspread pictures all the time. I the have flying fucking, squirrel. Yeah, so is like, what I'm being called. And and the session itself was so simple yeah. that I was like, I could do this at home. Do I really? He's fucking crazy. I don't know. And so like that was like the whole hour drive back, and I was like. I did pay 200, I think at the time we were, it was 200 bucks that, that you charged. It was 150 or 200. Yeah, it was yeah. 200 for the first yeah. one that was yeah, 150 right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, yeah, well, fuck. I mean, and again, like my voice always goes, well, if he says I have no fucking lats, I'm going to fucking show him I have lats. And But I people don't understand. For me to train people back then, because I was full, yeah. it was that. Yeah. Like I've fired a lot of people. Like I had guys, I remember the double turn on the parking. Yeah. I was like, if you walk, That was or stop, someone. I'm not training you. Right. And people knew some stop. I was like, sorry. And you're out. And yeah. you're out. Yeah. Yeah. And so getting home, got home, and that whole week was just working on lats. And I was, I, I mean, like at that point, there was, it was such a trippy switch because I was like, there's something, he's seeing things in a way I can't see them and I don't like it, but I really yeah. like it at the same time. Yeah. Because nobody's ever approached it that way. And, yeah. and you know, I'm talking, Six weeks of going to the physio every fucking six weeks, you go back to get your dry needle. You were like, do this. people don't understand two things about you back then how strong you were, how athletic you are, and how fucked up you were. Yeah. Because your push, what did you power clean and push press? 385. 385. Pounds. Yeah, so that's 170 <laughs> kilos. That's 170 kilos. You push press, yeah. so you power clean, push press it. Yeah. Like you did um, at some point in my gym, that's after we start. I had him for like a year or something. He cleaned and pressed the 260 pound sandbag. Yeah. And he cleaned, I think I have a video where I missed a clean of the 300 pound sandbag by like two centimeters. It's one of, at that body weight at the time, which is 100, 102 kilos, yeah. is one of the most impressive feet of strength I've ever seen. He's a guy uh, at 100, 100 kilo doing a basically 300 pound uh, sandbag clean. That's yeah. fucking impressive. And yeah. so you were that strong and that athletic, but at the same time, remember that you couldn't press the dumbbell on your left arm when yeah. we first came to me, yeah. like the monster dumbbell. Empty, you could just couldn't do it. It was hurting collapsing. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, the left lat was collapsing completely. Yeah, all traps. Yeah, so I mean, it was. Then I would come see you once a week, and then it became twice a week, and yeah. then I was like, "Hey, I'm available whenever you want," and I would just show up beforehand and yeah. hang out. And so at some point I was like, <laughs> well, no, because I liked what I saw more and more. First of all, I saw the potential even physically as an yeah. athlete. So I was like, Jesus Christ, you'll, you'll turn pro in strongman in a year if we do this. And then I was like, but also like, um, so when I say you had no left lats, you came back and your lats were so sore. Yeah. And you, you be, so what he did is he took the encyclopedia of bodybuilding by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. AKA the Bible, the Bible and did every fucking exercise in it. And I was like, yes, thank you. Right. <laughs> I did not have to tell you the obvious. Yeah. You did not make any excuse and you did the work. And I was like, Ooh, I like that. And I was like, all right. So, but you know, like, I didn't know if you just wanted to be an athlete. Right. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. Sense? Like what else is there? Yeah. Right. Well, to be a good athlete, let's be honest, you have to be an egocentric asshole. Yeah. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's just yeah. like, if you want to be really good. There's a focus where you just, that's all. The and the only yeah. thing that exists is you. Yeah. And so uh, being a coach and an athlete is extremely difficult. Yeah. Being a coach, a gym owner, and an athlete is probably impossible. Yeah. It's just the mindsets are too different. You know what I mean? Like to be able to switch. So you were already a good coach and a good athlete at the time. I was like, I like it. But which one is winning? Right. Do you truly care about people or are you going to go the athlete's route? I'm like... Right. But and at, at the same time, it's not for me to judge. I was like, I like, I like them. I was like, I like him. I will give him the tools to go where, wherever really he fun. wants to go. And so yeah. at first, I'm like, you want to be an athlete? Fuck it, let's do this. It's that this this is fun. And so we're doing that. And then I'm starting to see the coach suddenly going like, uh, can I get attention too? I was like, <laughs> well, let's see, because you might be saying it. Just because you said doesn't right. mean it's true. We've seen that plenty. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, so let's feed the coach and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like six months in because my shoulders started feeling better and I scoffed. Yeah. I mean, strength went crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the fun. shit you were doing at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I started to like pay attention to what you were doing. And I, I remember it was like, I think it was like five, six months in. 
Um, I had one of my clients, Ramin, that came to me goes, you know, you've been training with me for a while. And this is where I started, like, again, this is the coaching side of me was like, why the fuck doesn't it change? And he came to me and goes, hey, you know, this guy came and he's, he goes, I've been coming here, you know, consistently for a year and everybody's still kicking my ass. I'm not getting yeah. stronger. I feel like my movement's not getting better. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing as a coach? Yeah. <laughs> that was like a self-assessment. I'm like, you're right. I was like, the programming has nothing to do with the potential of the yeah. athlete. If you don't do what the athlete needs. Yeah. Um, it's one versus and yeah. you know going back to like that martial art thing i was like well i know what julian was doing with me and now i understand it because it helped me so much but i understand why it helped yeah. right the first time was just doing i was like fuck yeah i'm getting stronger but then i was like now i really understand why it's starting to work and so i remember i came to you i was like hey uh can i use some of the shit that you've been doing on me on on my clients and you're like yeah sure that's what it's for <laughs> right so yeah. i went with ramin and and we started doing the bicep opener we did the shoulder opener the ywtls and within four weeks he started to stand up straight i mean this, the one that was on the plane rides yeah, all the does, time yeah i remember like i still remember 15 yeah. 20 plane rides like he would come week, in the morning yeah, and yeah. go fly places I remember that. And you're like what the fuck and like, i remember because you... a month later you came in to me like dude it worked yeah <laughs> yeah and you had that look on your face going like there's something there yeah yeah and so again pff, another epiphany yeah. moment and so like i think it's just been a build-up of that year after year and i mean i think it was two years of us training together where it was finally you know i, I so people know by the way about that i think it was one year in where the gym wasn't doing well enough or so you thought yeah and you were like like i can't pay anymore yeah and i was like doesn't matter yeah, keep coming keep in. coming and then i was like okay so an exchange just helped me with my clients yeah. which you were asking to do anyway and so and then, which is kind of funny because then that goes okay i said help with the clients not because but that's because he trash talks so much i was like <laughs> so now i'm gonna get you back and so i was like so i was still training twice a week but this time i would make him be the rabbit on my clients yeah. <laughs> that was so much fun so i, I would murdered have, him like all week long oh it was so much fun so i would have ali ludwig <laughs> yes who was a, a oh, basically national level if not world level weightlifting already yeah. person i would do sleds with her Oh, so then he would fun. give me my training session <laughs> and then Val would show up yes. with uh, Tina and um, oh sorry Filipino Trixie girl, Trixie and and he'd sorry, be like Trixie. well go take him through the sleds and I was like oh you've got to be kidding me I was like yeah <laughs> yes. all right he's there because he was like can I can I hang around in the afternoon to see how you coach I was like sure Richard <laughs> my, by the way those three girls I mean Ooh, yeah boy. Val which is oh my god Val is just brutal because oh. I'm her pace buddy but she doesn't want to just beat me. She wants to push your threshold all the way to the end and then just destroy you the last like. So what she does is she stays miserable. right behind you. That bitch. It's she did that to me so many times. Yeah. She stays right behind you. And at the last second, she passes you. Yeah. But literally at the last second. And you're like, oh, my, how dare you? Yeah. Like, oh. No, but then I could keep up. So then she would pick up the pace. Yeah. And then at some point. That woman is I amazing. I would beat her. But I'm on the floor puking. Yeah. And she goes inside and gets on the bike and starts cleaning the gym and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And Daya walks out and he goes, she goes, I mean, you did beat her on the sled, but she's inside on the bike and you're puking next to the dumpster. Who really won? And I was like, that's not the point. Yeah. And then she would, yeah, then she would go in and do like 500 meter row intervals yeah. and we we're like, what? <laughs> yeah. And her strength level. Oh my God. We did, uh, we would have the wheelbarrow. I did 600 pounds wheelbarrow. And I finished. And she picks it and up. And she walked outside. And I was like, it's your turn. And she goes, oh, that looks heavy. And I was like, Val, you just pick it up and just fall forward with it. And she did. And I'm like, oh. So we had to put more weight every time because we're like, <laughs> fuck. And so, oh, yeah, people, that those uh, were the fun days, by the way. People don't yeah. understand the training sessions. At yeah. some point, we trained together. We stop, we stop after four weeks because you're like, dude, we're not going to make you it. Break. Oh, my God. No. It was ridiculous. It was, it was a threshold yeah, for it, sure. Oh, yeah. It was it, fun. It yeah. was a lot of fun. But so... That was basically our story for the next two years. And then we yeah. started, you started going to Invictus and then, sorry. Um, well, no, no, because there's the Babel Schwab podcast. Right. That blew that up was first. Yeah. everything. And when you saw that, you were like, we need to use this. Yeah. Me at the time, I thought it was my 15 minutes of fame. That's all. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. But you know, CrossFit, it was like two weeks from now, right. they'll meet with the next guy. Who will say something yeah. catchy and then i thought they're all gonna steal the shit anyway and they're all right. gonna use it yeah six years later still not true by the way which <laughs> amazes me but uh it seems like yeah who cares i mean look yeah. it's just don't worry about it it's just it's a fitting moment in the wind 
we'll be back to working. All I, me, I wanted the simplest life. Right. I just I have a gym. I do a difference with my clients. And I would have accepted that life. Right. Yeah. And then you did not. No. You were like, oh, fuck no. Dude, we need to do something with this. You know, people, I'm always in my head a lot, and I think in cartoons, and I think, you know, in awkward ways um, <laughs> that nobody should ever think of. <laughs> but so I always have these conversations in my head of where is it that I want to be, and am I in the right trajectory? Yeah. Right, which I think is a, is a good good conversation to have. I agree. Um, and I love my gym. I love my community. But there was a point where I, I needed more mm-hmm. because I was like, you know, I, I'm changing people's lives, but I want to change more. I need I, I want a, there needs to be a change in yeah. a, a, a progression and evolution of the amazingness that CrossFit did to the fitness mm-hmm. world. Um, we can do better. Yeah, and I think that even on my on my CrossFit when I applied for the for the affiliation, like that was one of my paragraphs. I'm like, I want to change the world. I want to change and revolutionize the fitness industry the way that CrossFit is doing so right now. Um, and so, you know that this was one of the most intro, instrumental thing to strong fit was your ambition toward that. Yeah. Because I have very little, and so I think people don't understand how much your ambition shaped strong fit in that way because yeah. otherwise me i'd be like i'm in San, i'm going to san diego i'm fine right yeah well you did say that <laughs> yeah i did but i also had a, a yeah. single father of an 11 year old but yeah. anyway but yeah so there, i remember i mean i remember the conversation perfectly i was um i knew that i i'd done as much as i could do with a small community mm-hmm. and having a gym and i felt extremely stagnant i think it'd been probably about a year where i'd been starting to feel very stagnant in that community um, where I was like, I need more. And so I had the conversation of trying to join um, CF staff or trying to join mm-hmm. a staff to go reach coaches and educate people. So I was seeing to movement and yeah. training in a different way. Um, and I was driving down with Dea in in the car down to, to Mexico to Cabo for Christmas. And we're having these conversations. And I was like, I need to change something because at the time, I mean, I was not, the amount of work I was putting in to the amount of money that was coming in was very, very bad. <laughs> in no, California, but, it was below poverty level. Let's just put it that way. Right. But plus, and, when you talk about, so people understand, when yeah. you were coaching all day yeah. from five in the morning to night and you're training at least three times a day, yeah. you're driving to me at two or three times a week, like the amount of coaching and training that you were putting in on the day, yeah. you were always a workhorse. It was yeah. crazy, but sooner or later, he had to come to... Yeah, and the, and I loved coaching. It, for me, it wasn't the money aspect, right? So I, I, I... No, but at the same time, you were making so little, it's not right. feasible either. Well, like, it's and, ridiculous. And yeah. we have Dea, who is my beautiful counterpart that goes, hey, you we need, need money. to realize this This shit is not... We, how are, are going to have a family? I was like, I'll figure shit out. I'll figure shit out. And so I was driving down. I remember we had that conversation. Then there's like that awkward silence because I'm like, I have no response anymore, but I'm going to figure something out. And I'm like, Julian has sandbags. And he says he mm-hmm. makes about 700 bucks a month with the sandbags. I'm going to start selling his sandbags online. I'm going to start making money there. And then I'm going to figure something out so I can get on, figure out how to get Julian to go teach the seminars. And so like my head just started spinning in this whole thing. And I was like, he has enough for a seminar. He has enough to educate people. He should be teaching coaches, not athletes. And my head just started spinning. And so mm-hmm. that I remember that whole Christmas but you were gone for three weeks. We were gone for three weeks, yeah. yeah. But it was, I, I get obsessive on things. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so those whole three weeks, like the one wheel pint, um, <laughs> you can talk today about yeah, that. It's been, it's been a few yeah. <laughs> weeks as well in the making. Um, but so those, those three weeks, like we would be in family situations and everything. And all I was thinking, I was like, we could fucking change the world doing this. Because if he did that with my shoulder, imagine what we could do with people that, and I, I, my head just started spinning. Because I started realizing and connecting the dots of all the people that need this. And I was like, on the drive back, I was like, I'm going to sell the gym. We're going to go work with Julian. I'm going to sell his sandbags, but we're going to do seminars. And I'm going to start, we're going to, I'm going to figure something out. And she was like, what? And I literally <laughs> got home and I, I told my business partner, I was like, you have to May, I'm selling the gym. <laughs> it was, it was such a clear thought that there wasn't yep. like a, well, let's do pros and cons. I was like, no, like there was. That's what we're doing. This is like this epiphany, like the novelty mm-hmm. search. I was like, no, I'm taking the step forward and nothing is stopping. That me. needs to be taken. Yeah. And so there was no remorse. There was, I was like, no, this is, this is exactly what's going to happen. And I have 
no bad feelings about any of it. Right. So on the other hand, so I can explain <laughs> where is where is coming with this when it comes to me. I've been struggling at um, strong fit in tolerance for five years. I always struggle. I don't care enough about money. And my, I don't have enough ambition in life. Used to. Now it's, it's actually I'm better at that because mentally I have a, I have a great the ambition. ambitions are different. Are different. Exactly. Right. They're not. It's, I'm still looking for superpowers since I'm fucking five I years old. Like you I feel like you changed. would still burn everything down to the ground as long as you know that you're going towards the Something. thing. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, there's, no, there's no need to please society in that Everyone. sense. Yeah, I have no super ego. Uh, yeah, I, I'll burn everything to the ground. So to here's get a quick question. Can we put a picture of you when I first met you? Because then you can, people can see why they kind of questioned my thoughts of seeing you. Yes, a, right. So I can explain. Genius. At the time, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm competing at 231 in strongman, but I, I'm not getting stronger. I'm getting burnt out for actually because uh, obvious reasons now, which is objectives, objectives versus constraints. Yeah. I went, I made the mistake. I made the mistake in MMA, I made the mistake in grappling, I made the mistake in strongman. I would sabotage myself this way where I would have constraints, do really well, turn to objective and fuck myself up right. completely to a point where I would quit. I've done that. I was national champion in, I don't know, enfin, level in, I don't know, like 10 different sports and I always end up sabotaging myself. I understand now why, but it's a long conversation between autism and everything. <laughs> but anyway, uh, at the time, it's not working so well. Maybe if I get bigger, I'll get stronger. Yeah. But I'm not built to be bigger than 230, 235. I just get fat. Yeah. And at the time, I'm 245, 250. You were big, yeah. Which is mostly <laughs> fat. And so I had a big waist. And Richard catches that picture of me turning sideways and leaning over, and my stomach is round. Yeah. Round is a shape. Uh, yes. No, I'm fat. Let's be honest, I'm fat. And then whenever I gain, I gain so much from the waist. Well, you were really enjoying Nutella at the time, too. Oh, fuck. Well, yeah, because now I'm going to get bigger also. Yes. But he would go to, like, Green Choice and get, like, six smoothies. And, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I just smoothies. went fucking nuts. But you also had, like, the massive I had the beard. beard. Like, uh, but I look like a homeless man. I have the same. So, to go back to the struggle. <laughs> yes. uh, I struggled for five years where I've never paid the rent of the gym. Or my own rent at the same time. You know that one? Mm -hmm. Like, always later. At the end, I'm not, I don't even have a rent. We live in the gym. To, yeah. to save money and everything. And then at some point, the barbell shrug happens, and suddenly I'm making money. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and at the same time, Invictus with CJ happens where I'm going to move to San Diego. So this is the first time I'm actually making money in forever. Yeah. And yes, I look like homeless because I had the same T-shirt and fight shorts for the last six years. Because yeah. the money now, I'm so happy. I'm putting it on Yaya and stuff like that. Yeah. So by the way, the first thing we did, we did it's going to come in the story when we go on seminar. The yeah. first thing we did was to go to Lululemon. Lululemon. Right before you, leaving, I was like, You yeah. dragged me to Lululemon. <laughs> I did look homeless. That yeah. picture is interesting. Yes, you can post it. And it's, yeah. but yeah, it's interesting. But so at the time, I'm finally making money. And here comes Richard saying, we're going to sell everything and go on a world tour. Yeah. At the time, I've left my, um, my partner of 12 years. And so I'm a single father, uh, one year in. And Richard yeah. comes and go, let's go on a world tour. And I'm like, Wait, <laughs> give me Let's one year in yeah. San Diego. And he's like, no. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I think I did that. It was January, February. And you were like, ah. And I was like, well, let's do this. I was like, here's, here's what I've picked up from you. And so I had this whole thing, kind of like modules. I was trying to be structured. I was super excited about it. I was like, let me sell your sandbags. And then right. in March, you were like, we sold like $3,000 in sandbags. I was like, yeah. I changed the yeah. website, like I was yeah. trying all yeah. kinds of things. You are trying. Um, you put in the work. And I said, the seminar can work. I was like, I have my buddies down in Mexico in, uh, in Playa del Carmen at CrossFit. It's now CrossFit Fibonacci at Circus at the time. I was like, let me do a seminar in Mexico and see how it goes. Yeah. And I, I went that. down and I saw like 35 spots. And I was like, I'm a nobody. Like I, I, I had my gym, but yeah. I'm a, I, who, yeah. who's to say I, I had no following on Instagram or anything at the time either. And 35 spots sold. And I came back and I was super stoked on it. I was like, this could be a thing, Julian. Like, we could yeah. do really well. I'm like, we actually have content to sell. Like, like not to sell, but content to teach people. You know what I mean? Oh, by the way, so people understand at that time, because I think it's very important, how much you're not just doing my stuff anymore. You have been playing with stuff at that moment now right. for a year. For example, the landmine row, yeah. which is one of the best exercises we have to engage the obliques and everything, you came up with it. Yeah. You come to me one day and you go like, 
hey, there's that exercise that I tried that I really like. I tried it. I was like, oh, this is fucking good. So at that stage, you're already contributing a lot towards strong fit. I don't want people to, people don't know that, but it's a lot of us like, yeah, I come up with the shit, you test it. Yeah, but sometimes you come up with the shit, yeah. I test it, and I'm like, oh, I like it, and then we move forward with it and everything. Like, at the time, you're already contributing to what exercises a lot. Yeah. The shoulder opener, we might have come up with that together because, like, a lot of the stuff you're testing at the time and coming up with new Doing ideas, stuff, yeah. and you, so it's not just my stuff anymore. It's already a lot of stuff is coming from you within the principle that I establish, but right. still that you have adapted to new stuff. Yeah. That's important to understand as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I, you have to play with the stuff, right? So it's always... Right, but people don't know that, right? Yeah. And that's why, like, I want people to understand how much from the beginning you started contributing to it. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but came back and I was like, Summer, we could do this. Yeah, we could do this. Yeah. <laughs> and so I remember, because at that time, I'm like, all right, so the CrossFit Games are coming. Yeah. Let me go on the WordCast podcast and announce yeah. those two seminars. And right away, we got well, a we announced massive one, answer. And it yeah. sold out right away. Yeah. And, and so, so we said, like, well, fuck it, we'll do one after. Yeah. yeah. And, so that's and then we sold out that one as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where Chris came into the picture as well. Right. Chris. Then Chris Moore for Barbell Shrug. So at the time, with Chris, we're talking a lot. We became fast friends, but really, really good friends. Yeah. Which I didn't know at the time, but Chris actually did not speak. Chris Moore did not speak much to people. But with me, the second we were in the room, God, we never shut up. Yeah. Like I remember he was on Valentine's Day, was, which yeah. might have been even his wedding anniversary or some shit like that. Yeah. And we ended up for like 10 in the morning till at nine o'clock at night talking nonstop and everything. We became very good friends. And he's like, no, no, Richard, it's right, you have to do the world tour. I was like, guys, wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. And then at some point, I was like, oh, fuck it. Yeah. Let's do this. We and just so, sold yeah. everything. I mean, we literally sold yeah. everything. And I was moving to San Diego. I had yeah. a gorgeous apartment over there. Apartment. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, well, fuck it. Yeah. So that was, I mean, it was, I think it was just a perfect storm of everything yeah. building up. And yeah, we, we decided, we did the, we planned the first European tour. And this is at the time where I was supposed to be planning a wedding yes. in Mexico. I had no money. So the yeah. world tour came at a perfect time. Because, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, will, I always say we'll figure something out and I'll always figure something out. But so Dave is like, how are we going to pay for the wedding? And the whole conversation, I was like, I'll figure something out. And so the, the, the whole thing happened. Day at the time was working in sales. And I, I remember, like, you told me the locations. I remember, I remember. Yeah. And I was like, perfect. And I went today, and I was like, you're quitting your job. We're going to go to Europe. We're going to go travel for three months before the wedding. She's like, no. And I was like, yeah. And she goes, no. <laughs> and, and she's very type A. She's like, well, where's the money going to come from? How are we going to pay? And I was like, well, this is the deal that we have with June. She goes, and then afterwards, I was like, well, we'll meet people. I was like, if worst comes to worst, and nobody else wants to see us ever again, at least we've networked through Europe. And maybe I can get a coaching job in Europe. We can live in Europe. <laughs> uh, so people understand, we have eight locations at the time. Yeah. And, and So we're quitting everything for eight locations yeah. for Europe. And so we're like, yeah, all right, we're doing it. And so... so who, I remember who set that up at first for Europe? It was Joachim, wasn't it? Joachim, From uh, CrossFit and Scared, yeah. yeah. Like, so we had like FaceTime calls and everything. And he was yeah. like, yeah, let me help you through Europe and stuff cool like guy. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we owe a lot to those He, he actually... He's, well, he was instrumental as well, because when he say, well, look, like, I want you in the Netherlands. I'm like, really? Yeah. You guys know who I am over there? It's like, oh, you don't understand. <laughs> and uh, you thought, like, we, we ended yeah. up moving to. And he was like, I'll help you through Europe. I have connections and everything. And that, that pushed, pushed me. A, a yeah, forward, it pushed yeah. a lot toward doing it as well. Yeah, I mean, it was it was awesome. So, that was sold, so cool. I mean, I sold everything. I left my car. I, I We left everything. We behind. left everything behind. And I had, again... There wasn't like a, ooh, I'm scared moment. It was like, I, it, I knew it was, it was just exciting the right the, thing to it do. Was yeah, exciting it was exciting from perfect. the beginning. Then we just kept booking yeah. dates after dates after dates. So I think we had like, we, we were going to go work, for, which is a lot of work, guys. We we're going to go do the eight seminars. Um, and so I was like, we need a vacation first because you always need a vacation. And so we booked a, a week beforehand in, in Mexico. Yep. And right before we we're going to cross the border to fly over, I was like, Julian, we need to look professional at the seminars. We're going to Lululemon. <laughs> and that was my first pair of Lululemons I've ever bought. And I still own them to, own them to this day. And that's why I love Lululemon. Because hashtag Lululemon. Yep. Um, if you guys want to sponsor. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, they last forever. And so we bought Lululemon. And then we went across the border. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are the pants I bought yeah. with the shorts. And so we went to Mexico. And then we just started doing the tour. And then once the tour finished, we had to fly back to get married. 
So I got I got married. And then from there, uh, I remember we were like right before the wedding, they're like, hey, they want you guys to come to Australia and Singapore right. and this and that. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people get reaching out and we're like, well, yeah. fuck it then. It's no longer a European tour, it's a world tour. Yeah, and then, then they turn into the world tour and we make t-shirts and then, and the stuff is, and it was they, there's no end in sight. And suddenly yeah. it became that just amazing trip that lasted three years. Cool. By the way, the only reason it lasted three years because we didn't want to, for it to last four, because we could have kept on we going. We could have kept going, yeah. Oh, it was, the, it was awesome. It and was that, like two, I mean, three weeks in a place, move on to the next one. Yeah, and that was really... Do, different country, different city. It was so much fun. Meeting it was so much people, fun. going all over the world. And again, I think we've been talking about the whole branding thing and everything. I think that we're kind of like the the fitness renegades I've been calling yeah. us because I just yeah. kind of like, sounds yeah. badass. I like Because we did it all way. Yeah. The whole time. But it was, yeah, it was Richard and Julian show. Yeah. Uh, so, and then we started coming up with one year into the tour. Um, I don't know what got into me exactly, but I was like, oh, fuck it, nervous system. I mean, I, yeah. tell, I told the story. Well, I mean, but Even before that, though, we were because it was right before we were in Dubai, and right. then I got to go. We right. I went that's to Australia. The, that's when Tunnel Talk uh, yeah. chain and came so about. So you're yeah. like, I haven't slept in five days, and I was like, Oh God! So when Julian gets into something, he just doesn't sleep. I might be obsessive. And he's a bit obsessive as well. <laughs> but so basically, at that time, we we're talking deadlift is internal rotation and everything, which was wrong. It's tension. Yeah, um, exactly. And we're trying to figure out the proper words, but at the, before we had that, well, we had anyway, we, before we had the chains, the torque chains, we were talking about primal functions of the muscles, yeah. right? And you started going through and you listed them all, and you're like, "There's something super interesting here." And you brought me the piece of paper, and you're like, "I haven't slept." And I was like, "Okay," and I started looking. And I was like, "Huh, that is kind of interesting." He's like, "They're chains," and I was like, "Yeah, they are chains." And we spent oh my god. Hours. I mean, yeah. six hours at a time at the oh, gym, yeah. playing around with every spray, every lots of variation. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was in, in Australia. Yeah. So torque chains came first on uh, the, that was that in Dubai. Australian that was it. Yeah. That was in Dubai. Dubai, and then we go to Australia, and in Australia we just start because that's going the cyclical, or cyclical when we yeah. start to go. But then, then it means this. Well, I don't know. Let's go try. Yeah. And then we went to another a small global gym. Yeah. And we just started an hour and a half. And I left the place like this because I didn't know at the time, yeah. but like I was full external torque. Ooh. I was like, yeah. dude, I felt something. Yeah, me too. And that was the first year. And then the second year we came at, that's when we were in Sydney. And I was still fucking jet lagged. And I'd come back from Rockland. I'm like, I remember these moments because they're yeah. so great. And you're like, come here. And I was like, yeah. And you just drew a fucking circle on the window. Yeah. And he's like, so look at that. Fact. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, it's the nervous system. <laughs> I'm like, what? He goes, Steve Ford just and you just start, you do the quadrant, like it's four states. You have the flow, the fight, the flight, the freeze, and you just started going off. And I was like, what? I'm movement, Julian, movement. And you're like, yeah, it all it's all connected. And then that's yeah. when the philogenetic hierarchy yeah. came in and, and it was <laughs> again six but, hours at the gym. <laughs> right. But then this is the beginning of the emotional mapping because mm -hmm. I'm going uh cyclical, acyclical, and I'm fucking either crash for three days or can't sleep for three yeah. days. Like the, the amount of testing we did on ourselves. It was insane. <laughs> but if I remember correctly, it's Sydney and I get a message from you saying you basically saw angels. Yeah. Like where you took it, I think the first step of emotional mapping was actually you. Because you went like, look, I did this and this and this, and I went so deep yeah. into this and this and this. I was like, well, that makes sense. But you went at it through muscle, through repetition in muscle. In muscles, yeah. Like you're like, well, I found the glute, and then I did this and this and this, and then I was like, oh, so you keep pounding, because I was going at it as, as usual, as conceptual. So you know, yeah. like whole body stuff, and we was like, no, 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 target one muscle, this, this, and this, and this. So that was the beginning of uh, emotion mapping. And it was like, because I targeted this. And that's when I was like, oh, so I do that stuff, but then extension training, that's yeah. when I did the stretching oh, and everything. Good. And I was like, dude, I felt something. <laughs> like, and then it was like, yeah, me too. And then we started to exchange yeah. experience and everything. But so you targeted muscle specifically. Well, I never did. Right. So you, you, that was the first step to emotional yeah, mapping. I, you know, I always look at, at things in extremes and I started to, and, and you know, we talk about like recognizing patterns. And I was like, I recognized behavior yes. with the same pain or discomfort. And outcome and, once, yeah. Yeah, 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 and that was like, I was like, huh. And so at first, at first I started with the oblique open, I was like, there's emotions there. 
this is training. This is yeah. not. And what the? And, but yeah. then I'm going back and I'm like, I've always been emotional towards training. Like I approach yeah. a deadlift different than I approach a bench press. And, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I was like, so there, it makes sense. And so I started, when I get obsessed on things, I just throw people into the wolves. <laughs> and so I remember like I was, we were doing the, that seminar. I was like, guys, we're going to do the oblique opener. And this is what I want you guys to do. And if you get emotional, it's okay. See what happens. And I think it was the first time where we had people laughing and crying and yeah. doing like weird shit at the seminar. I was like, whoa, there's something here. I like But it. you know, <laughs> you did something I never did, which means you took one exercise and pushed it to Push the extreme. Because yeah. me, I would just go a little bit and then switch and switch and switch. And so I would get to, uh, like I do, it's like a maze in order to get to the cheese, but you're like, no, 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 no. We're going to take one exercise and you're going to exactly. fucking push it until something breaks. Yeah. Something pops through. And then suddenly people went like this. I was like, yeah. okay, I guess we yeah. can do something with this. Yeah, and that's, I, again, my head thinks in, in trippy ways, but so I think of the the philogenic hierarchy in a, in a very macro way, but in a very micro way as well. As well yeah, exactly. And that's when I just started going full board. And I, and I remember after all of Sydney and, and that Australian tour in Canberra and everything, I was like, this is super trippy. And then I started getting, we went to St. Louis was the next stop. And we were in St. Louis. was a good Lewis. seminar, actually. Yeah, and I was like, I, I put it in the quadrants, and I was like, this is what I'm seeing. And you're like, well, just start with that. I was like, but and I was like, no, I'm not. There's more. There's more. There's more. Yeah, and but just, the key is you have to start somewhere yeah. so you can actually establish the patterns yeah, first right. and, and everything. But uh, me, it's always that. It's always triangles and circles, so it's very, like, on the on the chalkboard kind of stuff. You you took it to people. It's like no no no. But when this happens, I've seen that person and this yeah. person and this person do this. And I was like, oh, that's because me. If you look experimenting, it's mostly on myself. Right. Then I go on a whiteboard and I go I go back and forth. Yeah, down, but yeah. you you started to put it on people. Um, and we, yeah, but we started. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We st I was like, are you sure about this? But we started to see the same fucking reactions to the same stimulus yeah, every, every time. time. Every time. And that's really when you go like, yeah, but look at their left shoulder. And we're like, oh, yeah, like, look, this part. And then we yeah. started to push it toward uh, visual recognition, which right. we did when it came to movement. But then we started to see, like, really specific stuff. Things, yeah. Very, very specific. And that, that's when it got that's really when, trippy. Uh, and, yeah, because yeah. after that, I, I mean, I remember after that one, after St. Louis, I was like, I'm seeing people in just a very mm -hmm. different I light. remember, I remember that conversation. Yeah. Um, that's when Tyler, Mr. Tyler Ryder, small Tyler, we call him, uh, and I got really weird right on that Saturday, and I had to show up after dropping him off at, at the at his house at 5 a.m. Because again, I like to take it to the people. Yeah. <laughs> he did. And that, so those we were, are stories we should tell here to, and there. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into those stories. But I was yep. just trying to have a nice whiskey, and we were playing around with different parts of the body. And I was like, "Hey, dude, so you're complaining about this? Do you have some issues and anger towards a very specific?" And he goes, "Yeah, we're getting weird tonight." And he just downs a three-dollar shot, which. Beep. That out so they doesn't know the price. Yeah, <laughs> he watches like this. <laughs> uh, Forty dollars shot of Lagavulin. I was like, bro, and he goes, I got next round, and he orders two shots. He's like, we need to go dancing, which the dude doesn't dance. He just yeah. stands there like a bouncer. But uh, and so I was like, we're on to something. And and again, I get super super obsessive about these things in a very not practical, but like in a very human people approach. way. Yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, I remember that flight going home to go see Dea. We were flying to, we, were, we had a layover in St. Paul, in uh, Salt Lake City, but it was that super early flight, and we got upgrade to first class. Go Delta. Delta, if you guys want a sponsorship, listen. Delta would be, I yeah, love exactly. Delta 101, KLM. You guys are, you guys rock. <laughs> I'm just going to start plugging them in. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, so that wouldn't be a bad idea, by yeah, the way. So, yeah. I remember... We got upgraded to first class and I'm sitting there and I'm about ready to start enjoying my movie. But the lady next to me was super talkative and, and she started going and she wants to be the next Oprah Winfrey and this and that. And I was like, cool. And I started to see things. And that's when William Wright had William Wright had also come into the picture right. with the arm that ring and everything. Yep. And then I was like, huh. And I talked to her about what I was doing and she goes, oh. And I was like, here, let me try this. And like, I just saw the face just go, Phew. And I was like, oh, maybe I fucked up. <laughs> like, with a random person in the airplane, like, yeah. I went too left far. Shoulder. Yeah, and she just yeah. kind of stopped. And I was like, all right, have a good flight. And I just turned over, put on my headphones, and started watching the movie. And like, two hours in, she goes, and I was like, yeah, she goes, I have to go to the bathroom. I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah, go yeah. for it. Yeah. And she comes back, 
And then she goes and just sobs, like just sobs. And I'm like, oh, Richard, you went too far. And, I was, and she's like, I just need a hug. And I was like, yeah, I'll hug you. <laughs> and we just start hugging and she's just crying. And she goes, you just unleashed so much stress in my life. And I've been holding my PN for like the last 40 minutes because I have a small bladder and my dad always used to get mad at me and he used to beat me because I would wet my bed because of my small bladder. But now I realize it's okay that I have a small bladder and I can go pee and that's why I got the courage to tell you that I need to go pee. And I was like, listen, honey, you go just, pee just whenever me. you need just and me. it's yeah. okay. And I was like, there is a massive power behind okay. this. <laughs> so people, first of all, he told me that I was there. When, enfin, he takes me after. The funniest thing about that lady found strong fit and emailed us about it to say no, thank you to Richard. One. That was a different one. That was so I get an email one day, oh, it's so good. Yeah. A, a random lady who emails us saying, thank you so much, you changed my life, like the whole thing. Yeah. I think the Richard works with you, right? And then I get the whole email. Yeah, that was another, I mean, we should do a whole story of the, we should do stories on each concept because they all have such a great story behind oh, yeah. them. But that one was great because I was with Yoakam and we we're going for Daya's birthday party. We invited everybody in the world and she got mad about it. Yeah. But so Yoakam at the time was somebody that come to the seminar, did the coaches week. And he's mm -hmm. like, I, I'll come yeah. from Sweden. Yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah, dude, come on over. And so he was with me. And so we went downstairs and we we're sitting in the jacuzzi. Again, I like to, if I, if I don't. We're in Mexico. We're, so no, understand. we were in LA flying to Mexico. Oh yeah, right. I oh, had yeah. The, yeah. the night layover. Um, and so we're at the hotel and we were in the jacuzzi and Yoakam and I are hanging out, and this lady comes out, and she's with her daughter, and we were just sitting in the jacuzzi, and she started talking to us. And I was like, so I'm gonna see, I'm gonna make a correlation here. I want to see if the behavior can lead to imbalances in the body and discomfort in the body. Right, we were working on that. Or if it's yep. just movement that leads to the discomfort in the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I started talking to her, and we started having a conversation. And about an hour later, we find out that all these things have passed in her life and she's in this, in, this, in this moment in time. And I'm sitting there, I was like, I'm just curious. Do you have pain in your, in your shoulder on the left side, like right in the middle? And do you have like a lot of pain towards the right side of your hip? And her face just stops and she goes, what? How would you know that? <laughs> and you just see Joachim go like, how, how did you see what yeah. have you been watching her she hasn't even moved she's just sitting there what, yeah. how did you see that and I was like she goes yeah and I was like oh and I was like why don't you try training this way and, you know like I don't need you to go to the gym but just go to the just go move and try this out and she goes oh cool yeah I'll try that out and I the conversation stopped and we yeah. went upstairs and then she sent the email yeah <laughs> this is where this comes after William Reich right yeah Reich, whatever the fuck you say where there was an entire concept there that I thought stopped short of something we were seeing. And yeah. so we started talking a lot about that because I went full right for a while. And I was like, this is, first of all, it went fucking nuts on the organ okay. energy, but that's another problem. Yeah. But there was a concept there. I was like, ooh, like this, cool. yeah, there's something there. And then we started pushing our way. This is where I think we made a true progress. Sorry, is when we started leaving the proven path right. of a Reich or people like that. And we start to say, fuck it, there's more to it. Right. And then we start experimenting to a world like, all right, let's see what we find. Yeah. And we found and some been, cool stuff in there. There's, yeah. some, there's some really cool stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, we'll I, have to tell the story. Yeah, yeah we'll have I, to. I definitely love how I get to work with my clients now because even if they come just starting with movement, I know that I can impact their yeah. life so much more deeply than they could yeah. imagine at in the that time. sense, yep. right? And, and the experience. They and again, understand. I yeah. start with not having to talk about emotions or mm -hmm. traumas or anything. I start with movement. And, yep. and so that's always been the base, right? Is we always go towards movement and towards the active side of things, towards allowing people to have their own epiphany moments, which I think is yep. one of the biggest things I've learned from you. I mean, outside of all the, all the theoretical stuff is the ability to not complicate things and go into people's environment by allowing them to be active yeah and and allowing them to find their own way and that it's not a linear a linear yeah. progression and it's not an easy path and you know they're gonna go off the rails every once in a while and maybe and, it's necessary it's and, just and because there's not and, one line yeah. there's six different ones so they're not going from left to right they're just there and then they, it, there's no it's not a roadmap, it's the mind palace. There's just rooms and they're not connected through a line. They're just yeah. 
pop from one room to yeah. to another, and that's okay. That's part of the path. Part of the course, yeah. Yeah, so you have to go in all the rooms anyway. Right. No one says there's an order to do it. It's just it is an experience. Yeah, and so that's I I, I think I, I think that's where we are today, and I think that we're 21, 2021, and twenty two, yep. and twenty three, and twenty four. I think that the amount of influence that we can have, not at the, maybe not at the front lines, but I would say yep. with the generals in the back that can progress the front lines further. And what, what I saw me when we started to do this is I saw we can take what Reich did yeah. and go further, yeah. not adapt his stuff, take right. because it's not his stuff, it's human it's, thing. Yeah. <laughs> but his work, uh, is part of the work of many people, but we can stand on the shoulder of giants and go further than they did because right. they had limitation of science and personal issues and stuff like that. Right. It's like, we can take this, but go further. Yeah. Not apply their stuff further. Take the principles further, further, which I think is what we did. And when I saw that, the first thing I thought is mental health. Yeah. I have my own reasons to want to go there because of my brother and stuff. And when I saw that, I was like, we can help people like that. And when I realized that, like I, not just understanding it, but you know, like feeling it, right. I was like, all right, we have yeah. to, now we're just pushing this our way, but our way, not their way. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't going to take rash work and just adapt it to today. And right. that was not the song. It's like, yeah. yeah, cause there were holes in it. I was like, well, let's plug whatever holes we can. Let's take those principles, take them further and do right. it our way. And I do believe we are two step past what Reich was capable of doing. Yeah. And that's what I want us to do is to keep doing that. But not, so it's not a brand in that sense. Right. Because there is no brand. They're just what you can do and what I can do. And when we combine the two, we can take right. this very well, far. I, I think that that brand, the brand or the trying to give us an, not an identity per se, but like a, a brand, it kind of pigeonholes you to this. Yes. Right. So exactly. that's what you were like. I think the strong fit name pigeonholes you. Yeah. To I think that was a mistake. And I think that we've just, you know, I, we, we are, I, I feel like we are more of an experience, right? Yeah. Like we, we provide an entire experience that no brand could ever be put into words. I will, exactly <laughs> that, I, exactly that. And I think the pigeon holding, but I do understand where they're coming from. Cause like, but you need to make money off of this. You need to live right. and everything. I get it. But what we're trying to do is, as you say, it, it cannot necessarily be put into, into a, into a brand, it's an experience. Right. It's but I know what we can take that, and I know how much we can change the concept of anxiety and depression and stuff like that. Right. But I know that only works you and me working together, and we can push that because I'll be more theory because it's necessary for certain things. Right. You'll be more experienced because it's necessary for other things. But when we mix the two, then we can get that shit forward. But that that's not a brand. That's it. There's so much more than that. Right. Yeah. It's, a it's so much more than that. Yeah. And I, sure. I think that's very um, limiting in that aspect. Where in the last two years I've been struggling with that idea. Right. Because I find it uh, reductive compared to what we do. You know what I mean? Right. And then I w I'm always afraid of you know the, you know like the technocrats are going to come and try to monetize that in a way where we lose the fundamental idea of what it is, where it becomes a product. Right. Yeah. And it's not a product, it's an experience. For sure. And there's, you can't sell an experience, you can only experience, experience, you know, experience it, yeah. it. Yeah. And that, yeah, and that was the biggest thing a, for me. And I think that's the biggest thing is wherever, like for me, like I've always seen it as you set this and I'm like, yep, let's fucking go. Yep. And we take it forward and, and we push and then you change it. I'm like, yep, all right, let's go there. And that's the, like the coolest thing is that you, for me, when I see you, is I see the artist that comes in and just puts the line on the canvas and then walks yeah. away, and I'm like, oh fuck, let's start painting a planet there and yeah. this yeah. and this and this and yeah. this. And so that's me. Just whenever you bring up any sort of new concept, I'm like, cool. So like the impact stuff, like I've been playing yeah. with that. Oh man, every day, like nonstop. Yeah, yeah. So like I've been doing some. Mitch. I have some really cool, like just even not at a elite level athlete, but just Doesn't somebody yeah. that sits in an office for eight hours a day. Yes, how do you I'm do like, yeah. ooh, there's some cool things that we can start applying there. Like, uh, it, And there's the power spent, right there. Yeah. It's easy to do it on athletes. They are driven. They have nothing else to do all right. day. It's not that hard. But it's the people have actual, you know, busy lives, office, time, yeah. stuff like that. And then there's, there's so much 
progress for mankind in general to be there. And it is the majority of people too. Right. So it's kind of selfish to all, only direct it toward such a small group. So that's right. why we want the athletes too, but we want everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And, and me, there's, there's a conversation on also what I want me to push. That's why I'm pushing the kickboxing that I'm doing with Paul, who's right there actually, um, and grappling and all that stuff. Is I also want people to be active and st- and not quit. The number right. of people who quit after 35 is insane, alarming. Yeah, like just to tell everyone. That's why I'm posting so much too. Because yes, you have a business, so do I. You have a kid, so do I. You have a life, so do I. Yeah. We can still do this though. Right. They, and, and but if we don't, oh my God, that, that's the one thing that I got out of all of this is I understand now why my brother died. Right. And I don't want that for people. Like people don't understand how bad things can get. A lot of people talk about anxiety is like, yeah, you don't know how far how bad it can get. get. You don't know how rough, you don't know pain. Let me tell you that. And, buddy, and I hope you never do. Yeah, (laughs) for sure. But for the ones that unfortunately will go there, like there are ways out of this. And this is really, truly me. So I want to help everyone, but I do have a soft spot for the people that are, you know, slightly drifting toward what I know exists right. and that I would not w- wish on my worst enemy. Right. And my goal is that we can establish ways so people don't have to go there. For sure. The Avicii, yeah. the, like, you don't have to do this. Yeah. It, it does not have to be that bad. There are ways, and right. it's not drugs, it's not pills, it's not passive fixes, it's it's you. But there are ways, Right. like, that's why my problem where we list more and more anxiety as a disease is we're saying it's something you catch. Right. No, it is not. Well, and, and they, they, like I sent you that Instagram right. profile yesterday where the girl, like, it just seems so sleazy. It just, yes. it, it made me sick to my stomach yeah. that somebody is the anxiety healer. Like you're like. It's 260,000 followers. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that. CBT. And I feel yeah. like that just fuels the anxiety even more. Like, yeah. it allows you to play such a victim to an yeah. to, a, to an already victim mentality that we have Which created. is passive in nature, which right. will only make things worse. Because if we look at it, you're going to that person to heal you, which means you're not doing it to heal yourself. You're thinking she's the one that's going to heal you. There's and plus, difference. healing means it's a disease. It's a disease. Yeah. <laughs> like there's something wrong. Anxiety right. is a function. It's yeah. a drive. You're just not active about it. Like this, this entire concept there where those things drive me crazy. But the, what worries me so much with all this is, again, like you do not know pain, but it exists. Yeah. I've seen it. You don't want to go there. Right. And I don't want like... People, there's more and more people that go to our anxiety, especially in passive ways, depression, everything. Like, you don't know where this leads, but I do. Yeah. And I don't want anybody there. And so, and we, I believe we are coming up with the tools to, to help with that. And that's Wonderful. me, that's where my mind has been going for the last two, three years has been that. It's like, yeah. no, we can help. But we can make, like, we can make an actual difference. Right. Yeah, and that's what sure. I want. like because we've seen it through experience. So yeah. like, I want to be able to reach as many people as we can, so that we can make that difference. Yeah. That being said, for that we do need the brand and we need need the business to allow us to do this. Yes, exactly to do that. And we also need people to understand that this isn't a fucking weekend seminar. Like the girl yes. does a seven day seminar. Yeah, bullshit. And you know, like I have like the function of anxiety that's eight weeks, but it's I tell Even the people that, from the beginning, yeah. I'm like, guys, these are just tools that you can start to use. This isn't a healing, this isn't no, a shaman No, we're just telling thing. you, it's, hey, there are tools you can use. Yeah, exactly. And so I think like, that's that's very important. And and the fact that you, just because you attend the seminar, or you attend the Coaches Week, like I have epiphanies from this shit you say still. Yeah. You know, you said I it do. three years ago and today I'm like, oh, fuck, that's what he meant. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it's just, it's, it's the, the ability to invest in the craft nonstop. Right. Is, is what we are and it's the experience that we provide right. is that we're constantly investing in our craft by continuously pushing the boundary forward yeah. of how the human body works and functions. But, and as you say, it's a craft. Yeah. Like, so therefore, you can't be a victim. Right. If you're a victim, you cannot understand it's a craft like those are opposite values. And so the more you go toward victim, the worse things will get, yeah. the less 
Like you'll feel better for two weeks. Anxiety will come back in a, as a massive bitch because right. it's a function. So you can't get rid of a function. You can only either make it functional or dysfunctional, but it's coming. Right. That energy is just tension that's coming. Tension can be a good thing. It doesn't yeah. have to be a bad thing. Right. Artists need tension. So, but if you treat it as a victim, as a passive thing, oh my God, like you don't understand the door you're opening and that's not a door you want to open. Like behind these doors, behind those doors, Never. and this door behind those doors, <laughs> and eventually the it's door that place. opens is yeah. a mean one that I, I would not wish on my worst enemy. And so like that monetization of those things bother right. me so deeply right. that that's what I think were also bothering me, like in all the branding stuff we were doing, I was like, guys, I will not go there. Right. But th that doesn't mean we have to. It's just understand where they are trying to help us. And I, I get it now, right. but at first I was so afraid of that, yeah. of that unethical approach to healing anxiety and shit like that. That bothers right. me so much. Yeah, for sure. It's as, as a concept. Maybe not that lady. Maybe she's great. Well, I don't I think, know her. Yeah. But uh, so I I'm not, think, I, I can't criticize, but active brand if we're going to put a branding yeah. word to it yeah. we're very active, active. Is like, name. Yeah. i don't think that you'll ever see us take a step back and yeah. allow other people to i mean well I, I love building up coaches yeah but within us we're always going to be present it has to be yeah right so that's why i think also they were trying to get us because as a company you want to step back and they, no 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 the only people who can do it is you and me man right and together, like where we fuel both sides and everything, that's the only way this can go forward. And so I think from now on is we're gonna, like that idea of, you know, people within the stuff and everything, no, helping us in the back end, yeah. yeah. But nah, no, no, no. It's you and me forward and then right. uh, trailblazing forward, yeah. And hopefully making a difference. Beautiful. So we're gonna call it there, guys. We yeah, we have more stories to yeah. tell anyway. So, we'll, so this will be the, the beginning of the history of Julian and yeah, I's relationship. Exactly. And then on the next podcast, we'll go into what 2021 brings because we didn't get into that. Yeah, but we have cool okay. stuff we'll, too. Yeah, We'll have some oh, cool stuff have, coming yeah. up on 2021. So stay tuned, subscribe, comment here, link over there. Rare Barracuda, Julian Pinot one. <laughs> I do it every time, guys. It's going to happen. There's yeah. no fucking buttons anywhere. Exactly. Right. Yeah, there's no button. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Did you put a button on the last one? Yeah, you did. You so put good. an actual button. That's why it was so funny. Because we were just trolling. But yeah. whatever. Anywho. Have a good one, guys. Catch you guys on the next episode. Bye, guys.